Welcome to Super Mario Galaxy 2, a game loved for its movement, creativity, and characters. But today we're going to be focusing heavily on movement, specifically an underappreciated movement option known as jumping. If you've read the title, you already know what we're going to be doing, but on the off chance you haven't, we're going to be trying to complete a full 70 star run of Super Mario Galaxy 2 while using the least amount of jumps humanly possible. This means that no task is going to be involved in the making of this video, and everything shown has been done by me. Anyways, what do I count as a jump? I'll be counting everything that requires Mario to push himself off the ground with his feet. This means that bouncing off enemies and swinging off vines will not be counting as a jump according to my rules. The game starts us off with Mario hopping out of this pipe, and since this is a part of a cutscene, this will not be counting. Unfortunately, right after, we do have to use our first jump to get over this other pipe. On the next screen, we meet up with a little star friend that gives us the ability to spin. And this new ability is definitely going to be useful. But for now, we can't really do anything with it, causing us to use two more jumps. The rest of this short tutorial is pretty much cutscene only, so we can reach our first galaxy using this launch star. The first star we will need to grab is from Sky Station Galaxy, and it starts out with us needing to get into this green pipe. This thankfully isn't a problem for us, since we have the new spin ability that allows us to gain a small bit of height when we're not touching the ground. The next area of this level has a wall that we aren't able to climb up, but we can actually use this nearby Octumba to bounce up the wall. We do this one more time towards the end of the level as well. At this section with two small planets and a crystal, you can find an angle that'll allow you to reach the next area and reach the boss fight against Pee Wee Piranha. This fight is unchanged from normal gameplay. All we have to do is spank him a couple times to extract the star he's carrying, but we do have to jump one time to grab the star since this planet is completely empty. After grabbing our first star, we reach this planet that gets transformed to look just like Mario. This is our starship, and we can safely go from galaxy to galaxy using this ship, just like our sponsor for today's video. Surfshark VPN is a service that helps keep your online identity safe by allowing you to change your IP address by using one of their many servers around the world. This can also allow you to bypass region-specific restrictions on websites like Netflix, but that's not all this service has to offer. In addition to being able to completely hide your location, all the information from your device that gets sent to the internet is completely hidden as well, meaning the public Wi-Fi everybody's been saying isn't safe will now be perfectly fine to use. And all you need to do is just press one button once you start up the app. I can say that this product does exactly what it says it does, and it makes me feel confident when using the internet since there's a lot of people trying to steal your information online nowadays. So if you accidentally click a location stealing link, you can feel safe knowing that they didn't actually get your real location. Anyways, if you want to try out Surfshark for yourself, you can click on the first link in the description or use code ANSELG for 83% off, plus 3 free months. If you don't end up liking the service, you can always get a refund using their 30 day money back guarantee, so there's really no risk if you just want to test out the waters a little bit. Huge thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video, and once again you can click on the link in the description if you're interested in using the service. Anyways, the first galaxy we can visit is called Yoshi Star Galaxy, and of course by reading the name you'll know the new character we're going to meet. Starting off, we reach the hardest part of the entire galaxy, which just so happens to be this little tiny edge at the very beginning. You can just barely bounce on this corner to get on top of it, and the rest of this area can be completed easily, letting us reach Yoshi without jumping a single time. Now that we have Yoshi though, we have some more rules to go over. I do count Yoshi jumps as a jump for Mario, and I also count dismounting Yoshi as a jump, but I do not count his flutter ability as a jump. The rest of this level was a breeze to run through, we have to bounce off some fruit a couple times and grab the star using these cling flowers. Zero jumps. The second star we can grab from Yoshi Star Galaxy starts out simple, but we do have to perform a few tricky moves to move on to the boss fight against King Lakitu. This boss fight is of course no match for Yoshi's abilities, but the star does require a precise flutter from him. I decided to head back to Sky Station Galaxy for our fourth star, just to be met with a 2D section which of course got me a little bit worried. Thankfully this 2D section actually doesn't require any jumps at all to get through, and the final section of this star wants us to defeat this piranha plant and damage boost a couple times. Zero jumps. Our next galaxy to visit was Spin Dig Galaxy, and our first star was pretty straightforward. We get introduced to a new item called the Spin Drill, and we can use this item to reach the opposite side of a planet quickly. We also get a little bit of height after using it, so we can bounce on certain enemies to reach higher areas. 
The boss battle for this star, Digaleg, is unchanged from normal gameplay. After this star, we have a bit of a choice between Fluffy Bluff and Right Side Down Galaxy. I decided to go to Right Side Down Galaxy first because I knew there was a free star we can claim there by going into this pipe, burning some boxes to go into this second pipe, and then burning more boxes. Zero jumps. Now we are on to Fluffy Bluff Galaxy, and we get introduced to a new power-up called the Cloud Flower. This power-up can let us create three clouds at a time that we can use as platforms. I was going to play the first star for this galaxy, but it would definitely require more than one jump, so I decided to go for the secret star that requires us to grab 30 coins that we can obtain by going through this pipe. After we collect the 30 coins, we can make our way to this tree that has a sling star leading us to a hungry luma that'll eat our money in return for a new planet. This planet contains a very tall tower, and it seems very intimidating, but we can actually climb up part of it using the cloud flower. Once we get halfway up the tower, we can skirt on over to the back side of the tower and slide off one of our clouds to find a secret area that'll bring us to the top of the tower. After that we can gain height from this weird spinning platform and get a boosted side flip using one of our clouds. One jump. After completing this level we're able to move on to our final galaxy of world 1. Bowser Jr.'s Fiery Fortilla. The level portion for this doesn't require any jumps and the boss battle for this galaxy is against Gobblegut. This fight is unchanged from normal gameplay so we can take care of him very easily. The Grand Star does unfortunately require a jump to grab. Now that we've defeated our first major boss battle, we can move on to World 2 which introduces us to a galaxy called Puzzle Plank Galaxy. The first star would require a few jumps but there's a secret star we can collect by grabbing a whole bunch of coins. This does cost one jump but it's definitely better than what the original star would have gotten us. After this star, we can head over to Boulder Bowl Galaxy, where we get introduced to Rock Mario. This power-up allows Mario to plow through pretty much anything in his way at high speeds. The only limitation to this is that we can't really get to higher areas very easily, so we'll have to use the side of these fences to move around the galaxy. The boss battle for this star was pretty simple, and the transformation of becoming Rock Mario can allow you to grab this star. Hytale Falls introduces us to Yoshi power-ups, and this Hot Pepper power-up allows Yoshi to run at high speeds. This level isn't very difficult. The Silver Stars level for this galaxy was also pretty easy. Zero jumps. For Cosmic Cove's star, we would once again have to jump multiple times, so I went for a secret star that has us catch a star bunny that required no jumps. We started to run out of stars to grab to reach the next castle galaxy, so I decided to go back to Spin Dig Galaxy to grab the second star. This was a pretty easy star to grab, but it does unfortunately require a jump to hop into the pipe. I also decided to try out Flip Swap Galaxy, which costed some star bits to unlock. The actual level was pretty easy, but the star seemed impossible to grab. Thankfully, there just so happens to be a quirk with these flip panels that isn't very known. If you walk off a panel and have Mario do this sliding animation, you can store the momentum from the slide after you switch the flip panel to the other side. You were then able to release this momentum after reactivating the flip panel to the stored side and sliding off a wall. You can use this trick to grab the star with zero jumps. For the last star we needed to grab in this area, I went to Wild Glide Galaxy to take flight with Fluzzard. This star wasn't very difficult, but we did have to jump to grab the star. Now that we have 16 stars, we can head on over to Bowser's Lava Lair to fight against Bowser for the very first time. This level starts out with us defeating a Magikoopa, and once defeated, a Pool Star spawns in. And a little fun fact about Pool Stars in this game specifically that wasn't in the first game is that you can actually grab one of these by pressing the B button on the controller. This means that every Pool Star in this game is perfectly fine to use since it won't activate a jump like it would by pressing A. Anyways, this level was pretty easy to complete, but once we make it to the section with the meteorite, it seems quite worrying. We normally have to ground pound to use these, but a ground pound would usually require us to jump. Thankfully, we are let off the hook this time since we can bounce off this Luma's squishy head. I would like to say the hard part is over, but we still have to do the same thing three more times and without the help of a Luma friend. 
and since we have no access to a friendly squishy head, we have no choice but to use the bounciness of an enemy nearby the meteorite to move on to the final part of the level. By carefully damaging this hammer bro, we can lure it towards the meteorite and use it just like we did for the Luma. This helps us with the first two locks on the Bowser door, but the third one does require us to use the gravity of the meteorite to just barely remove the lock. After that mess, we can fight Bowser for the first time, and his attacks involve more meteors. Thankfully, Bowser pretty much does the heavy work for us and deletes a meteor when he punches down on the ground. This will allow us to gain just enough height from the airspace left over, and we can ground pound a nearby meteor when we start to lose height from the fall. After doing this a few more times, we can defeat Bowser and grab the Grand Star by burn boosting. Zero jumps. After completing World 2, we can move on to the third world of this game, which contains Tall Trunk and Cloudy Court Galaxy for our first choices. I wanted to go to Tall Trunk Galaxy first, but it pretty much immediately throws us into a 2D section, so I decided to check back on it later and go to Cloudy Court Galaxy, which pretty much had the same deal. The difference with this time was that you can grab a bunch of coins before the 2D section and bring them to this hungry Luma that'll lead you to a star that requires 5 silver stars. This was a very interesting star since parts of this area looked impossible to return from. By the way, if you didn't know yet, Starbits act as a weaker but longer range spin attack on enemies. So we can throw Starbits at these Goombas to create a path back to the clouds that we can walk on. Zero jumps. Our next galaxy was Freezy Flake, and the first star for this was pretty easy besides this precise bounce on these ice cinders. You'll also need a burn boost to grab the star. The second star for Freezy Flake seemed promising, but we don't really have anything to help us grab the star without jumping, so we'll have to come back to this later and try Haunty Halls for now, which contains Yoshi and some bulb berries that light up a path for us. Zero jumps was expected for this. Also, for whatever reason, Luigi shows up now on certain stars so we can play as him and have his floatier physics. The second star for Haunty Halls requires no jumps. We also unlock Prankster Comets, which give us more of a challenge for certain galaxies. But before doing those, I think we should check back on Tall Trunk Galaxy, where once again we get stuck on this 2D section. Before we reach this 2D area, we can see this Paragoomba flying around the area and from experience, we know that we can gain height from damage boosting. So by using Star Bits, we can potentially bring this Goomba over to where we are to climb up the stairs blocking our way. Unfortunately for us, Yoshi doesn't allow us to throw Star Bits, so we're forced to get off Yoshi and do some precise bouncing to reach the launch star without Yoshi. And since this Goomba is only in view while we're landing, we're forced to hit this Goomba during this very tight timer. It is thankfully possible and we can reach the rest of the level by damage boosting. Everything else was a breeze to get through. Tall Trunk's second star contains a slide, and I was actually surprised to see how easy this actually was to navigate through. No jumps were needed. After this, I finally decided to head over to a Prankster Comet star, and that first star happened to be in Hytale Falls. This level was much easier than I thought it would be, despite me almost dying before the final section. I also decided to try out Beat Block Galaxy, which was blocked by a Hungry Luma, and now this is my favorite level in this game that requires zero jumps. I decided to head back to Freezy Flake Galaxy to try out the second star again, and Luigi was here this time to help us out. The boss battle was easy as I would have expected, but the star still seemed out of reach. Oddly enough, however, we're actually able to spin up to this tree and slide off far enough to grab the star with zero jumps. I don't know why this tree is like this, but I'm not complaining. There also happens to be a secret star in Freezy Flake Galaxy that requires us to bounce on some snowballs to reach this pipe. Inside this pipe, we meet a new character called the Chimp, and he will occasionally give us challenges that require us to gain points by defeating enemies. The challenge he gives us is really simple, and we can complete it very easily. The next star I decided to grab was a Prankster Comet all the way back in Yoshi Star Galaxy called Spiny Rainbow Romp. This star requires us to beat a whole bunch of spinies under a very strict time limit. The hardest part about this star is getting the wall bounce at the beginning, but after that it's all pretty much skill based. Zero jumps for this terrible level. After that star, we are able to reach Bowser Jr.'s fearsome fleet. We get Yoshi for this level though, so this doesn't really pose that much of a challenge. The boss battle against the Mega Hammer does require some quick timing though but it's all possible. Zero jumps were required for the entirety of World 3. 
Now let's see how World 4 will treat us. We start out with a few options here. We have Supermassive Galaxy, and we have a bit of a star bit gamble. But since Supermassive Galaxy was going to start us off with two jumps at the very beginning, I think I'll take my chances for the Premium Galaxy since we weren't low on change or anything. Anyways, the galaxy we purchased was called Sweet Mystery Galaxy, and since we had unrestricted access to a Yoshi, we can grab the star without any issues. After grabbing that star, we unlock Flipsville galaxy, and this level wasn't very difficult, but the boss would normally require three jumps. I decided to go back to the supermassive galaxy to grab a star with two jumps instead of three. After grabbing that star, we can head on over to Honeybloom galaxy and try out the bee mushroom. All we had to do for this first star was collect some silver stars, and there wasn't actually that much difficulty to this level besides trying to get to higher areas without jumping. After completing this level, we will have access to Starshine Beach and Chompworks Galaxy. I decided to go to Chompworks Galaxy first and try out the first star there. It was very easy and only required a few careful movements every once in a while. We also needed the lava boost to grab the star. And after grabbing this star, we get a letter from Guillermo that has us bring him a Goomba in Boulder Bowl Galaxy. And since there was also a prankster comet in that same galaxy called Rolling Crabber Romp, we can grab yet another easy star since it was unchanged from normal gameplay. Afterwards, we can visit Starshine Beach Galaxy to grab 5 silver stars. Once again, another easy star to grab. But the second star in Starshine Beach isn't so easy to grab. We have these Piantas that can throw us really high up, but we don't quite get enough height. So we're going to have to come back to it a little bit later to see if Luigi can do better since he wasn't showing up just yet. I went back to Cloudy Court Galaxy first since I knew I'd have better chances of getting a Prankster Comet from there. It wasn't too difficult to navigate through, but one section near the end does require us to jump one time to get through since our clouds can't help us very much in this vertical area. Thankfully, the rest of the level can be completed by using our clouds wisely and using something I like to call a double spin, which is when you grab a cloud flower while spinning and then getting a second spin from it. We can use this trick to just barely grab the star with one jump. Another star that required one jump was Pee Wee Piranha Speedrun. This was the normal first star for Sky Station Galaxy, except we had a very short time limit to actually complete the level. Thankfully, there were timers all around the area that would add 10 seconds to our timer, making this star possible with at least one jump. We also grabbed a star from Wild Glide Galaxy, which had us race with some other birds, and it also costed one jump. Now we only need one more star until we can unlock the next castle galaxy. So I decided to head back to Starshine Beach, and to my surprise, Luigi actually showed up to help us. And help he did not do. Luigi just barely misses the top of the tower, so I think I'll either have to jump here, or think of something really obscure that might just work. What if I tried shore launching? Shore launching is an interesting trick that allows us to gain significant height by clipping into the ground a little bit. It was definitely not easy to perform, but it does make it possible to get to the highest point in the galaxy and grab the star with zero jumps. And after this star, we'll be able to go to the final galaxy of World 4, Bowser's Gravity Gauntlet. And this galaxy has to have one of my favorite tricks in this challenge at the very beginning of the level. There's this extra health mushroom over by these fire bars that will give us some extra health. And since we can take more hits than normal, we can go ahead and ground pound straight into this lava to start gaining a whole bunch of speed and break all sorts of physics that this game has just to skip past half the level. The rest of this level was possible to get through, but it was also very, very precise. The final area where we would ground pound these meteorites was also possible thanks to this random Luma. This second battle against Bowser was also possible, but it does introduce us to these more powerful meteorites that'll deal damage to you if you touch their lasers, which are pretty much unavoidable. This boss fight isn't too difficult aside from that, so this is yet another zero jump star in our pockets and another world we can unlock. For World 5, we have access to Space Storm Galaxy for our first stars. And at the very start, we'll have to use these pull stars that don't require us to jump since we can use the B button. The next area was a 2D section that has us use a precise spin, but there wasn't any issues here. The rest of the star can be completed normally. Our next star for Space Storm Galaxy was called to the Top Man's Tower. This star required us to climb to the top of this tower with Thwomps, Fizzlets, and the Bowie Base Tower. The star can be collected by shock boosting twice to bounce off this Top Man. Zero jumps. 
After completing this level, we could actually go to every other galaxy in World 5. So I decided to try out Upside Dizzy Galaxy first, which was a pretty good idea since there was only one slightly difficult part in the entire level, which can be completed by bouncing off a Goomba into a pipe. After this star, I decided to head over to Boo Moon Galaxy, and we had Luigi to help us for this first star, which turned into a totally different star because for whatever reason, this launch star triggered this really rare glitch that launches Luigi off the map. Anyways, zero jumps for the star in the sinking swamp and silver stars pop up. Up next was Shiverburn Galaxy, and for this first star, we start out over this lava sea. Thankfully, we could remove all the lava in the area by going over to the switch and ground pounding it. The rest of the level was pretty simple, and the boss fight against Prince Picante had us bounce some coconuts back at him while dodging the lava spots he would leave on the ground. After defeating him, we'll need to touch one of these lava spots he places down before his explosion animation plays so we can grab the star with zero jumps. Our next star for Shiver Burn has us carefully navigate to this pipe with a cloud mushroom so we can once again take a challenge from the chimp. This challenge was the exact same thing as last time, so it doesn't require any jumps. The next galaxy I decided to try out costed us too many star bits, but since it was another fluzzard galaxy, we can complete it very easily. It also doesn't cost us any jumps since there is a sign that we can bounce from. After this star, we can actually go back to Space Storm Galaxy for another star requested by Guillermo. All we had to do was bring him a top man. Speaking of Guillermo, we can find another star in Upside Dizzy Galaxy that has us break some boxes with a fire flower. Bouncing on Guillermo's head can allow us to grab the star with one jump. At this point, we only needed a few more stars to reach the next castle galaxy, and we were running out of choices, so I decided to try out the first star in Fluffy Bluff Galaxy, which I previously thought would require a ton of jumps. But apparently, we don't need a jump at all. The first area that would require a jump is barely possible by spinning into the launch star's hitbox, and we can just barely reach the top of this wall by bouncing on a flap tag. We also tried the second Boo Moon Star, which had us jump one time. There was also a Prankster Comet in Shiverburn Galaxy that also needed a jump. For the final star we needed to grab, I headed back to Right Side Down Galaxy's first star which has us keep the gravity unflipped so we can reach this area with a fire flower. This normally would require us to use one jump, but there just so happens to be a Paragoomba floating around that we can carefully and I mean very carefully bring over to the fire flower section. This level takes a lot of precise movement, but they're thankfully all possible. The end also has us walk on top of the 2D section to grab the star with zero jumps. Now with 55 stars in our pockets, we can head on over to Bowser Jr's Boom Bunker, which requires us to jump at the very beginning of the level. I'm going to pause right here for a second. This part was recorded more than a month ago, and I can finally say that I got the jump. All I did for this was trick a bullet bill into turning itself around so it'll take a longer time to get to me, and during that time I would try to spin on top of this rolling platform which is definitely the hardest part of this trick. After I finally got on top, I would stun the bullet bill and lure it to the cannon, so that's minus one jump. Somehow. The rest of the level was possible to complete, and the first two phases of the boss fight against Bowser Jr. were really easy. The third phase, however, was not so easy. We had to use the Cloud Flower to get on top of Bowser Jr.'s Boomsday device, but it was just barely too tall to climb now. Instead, I went to the third layer of the Cloud Flower spawn areas, and I could just barely make it on top by actually using the Boomsday device. Zero jumps. After defeating Bowser Jr. for the final time, we were able to unlock the final world of this game, World 6. The first galaxy we were allowed to visit was Melty Monster Galaxy. The first star started off with some pool stars and a pipe that I thought we might have to visit later. But after seeing the last part of the first star, I think we'd better go in now. This pipe brings us to another chimp challenge, and for this one, we're given a rock mushroom so we can knock down some bowling pins. This area is perfectly fine up until we reach this spot with a hole in the middle. This requires us to jump with the rock mushroom, which honestly, I totally forgot we can do. Unfortunately, I will be counting this as a jump even though Mario's feet aren't really pushing off the ground. One jump. After completing this star, we can head on over to either Clockwork Ruins Galaxy or Flash Black Galaxy. I picked Flash Black Galaxy because we get Yoshi, and the first star here was as easy as you'd expect. The second star was also very easy since we just had to jump on some Octumbas to unlock the star. After that, we can go on to Slimy Spring Galaxy, which is an underwater-themed galaxy. 
so of course there was no need to jump. After going through those two galaxies, we were forced to go back to Clockwork Ruins to get either Star 1 or the Secret Star. The first star isn't very promising though, so I went to grab some coins to reach this planet that has a whole bunch of hammers. It wasn't very difficult though, so we can grab the star with zero jumps. After grabbing the star, we can head on over to Throwback Galaxy, which I was really excited to play. This first star didn't really start out so difficult since we can climb everything like normal. But after defeating this Womp at the top of the level, a hole will open up that'll start a boss against King Womp, and of course, after defeating him, there'll be a star placed in the middle of the battlefield like always. I thought of bringing some Goombas to bounce on after defeating the boss, but that clearly wasn't working out. So I brought a second player in to have an easier time with bringing these Goombas to the battlefield. This boss fight was very easy to complete, and we can bounce on these Goombas' heads to grab the star with zero jumps. The second star for Throwback Galaxy had us collect 5 silver stars, and 4 of them were pretty easy to grab. The fifth one was at the very top of the map though, so we had to bounce on some Goombas to grab it. I actually brought up a third Goomba to this area with the Cloud Flower, but apparently we didn't even need it since we could just barely make it to the fifth silver star with 2, which I did for the Speedrun Prankster Comet. Speaking of Prankster Comets, we're actually able to head back to Bowser Jr.'s fearsome fleet to fight Mega Hammer with only one health. This should have been a difficult star without jumping, but we can just kind of... stand still for most of the boss fight. After grabbing this star, I decided to head over to Fluffy Bluff Galaxy to grab a star from the chimp that I didn't grab because I changed the route of my run really late. Anyways, this star requires us to bounce on enemies to get a minimum of 10,000 points. This challenge was actually pretty lenient, so we didn't have to do a perfect run for this. I ended up with 12,000 points. The star was also in an interesting spot, so I threw some star bits at this Goomba so I can bounce on its head. Zero jumps. After this star, I decided to head over to Battle Belt Galaxy for its first star, which has a few interesting areas to overcome. Thankfully, this galaxy just has us defeat enemies. We can grab two stars for free, since there is a Daredevil Comet for this galaxy. After completing this star, we can head back to Fleet Glide Galaxy to grab another Fluzzard star that requires zero jumps. Now that we have 69 stars, we can finally go to our final star for this challenge, which just so happens to be my favorite. Silver stars in double time. This was a very fast-paced star to grab, but it was clearly possible to complete since the beat block stars are pretty much always going to be easy. Now that we're sitting at 70 stars, we can head on over to Bowser's Galaxy Generator for our final battle. This star begins pretty normal. Defeat some enemies and use the spin drill power up to reach a launch star. After using the launch star, we are unfortunately forced to jump one time since this is a 2D section. This area is also very interesting because we get a cloud flower. Unfortunately, we can't do much with it if we wanted to progress the normal way. But thankfully, Nintendo made this secret path that leads to the end of the 2D section. After this section, we can grab Yoshi and play the rest of the level as normal. We can also bring Yoshi up to the meteorite lock area, which unfortunately does require three jumps to complete. Now we're on to the final Bowser battle of the game. Luckily for us, this boss battle is actually the exact same as all the other Bowser fights, so we can defeat him without needing to jump and damage boost for the final grand star that we unfortunately can't even get yet. Now we're ready for the actual final Bowser fight of the game. This battle takes place in who knows where, but we're able to ground pound on all the meteorites in the area as long as we don't ever touch the ground. This part of the final battle requires some luck, but ultimately it was pretty easy to complete. And with that, we are able to grab the final grand star of the game with one final jump. But wait, our challenge isn't quite over yet. We still have one thing left to do, and that's to die in the credits, ending this challenge off with style. The only problem with this, however, is we can't use our spin move anymore, so there's no way of opening the Yoshi egg. Or is there? We can bring in a second player during the credit scene, and since the second player is actually able to spin, we can open up the egg. We still can't get on Yoshi quite yet though, so we'll have to push him off the edge to mount him. After that, we can wait for the final scene of the credits, so we can use the infinite flutter trick. Yes! Oh my gosh! <laughs> I did it! With that, we have beaten Super Mario Galaxy 2 with a grand total of 23 jumps throughout the entire game. I really hope you enjoyed this video, I spent a lot of time trying to do this challenge, so comment down below what you thought of it. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it, and yeah, that's all I have for now.
2,000 likes for a 100% run of the game.